Next up, uh, Deputy Inspector Gallagher has been in our district for some time. He was initially the executive officer of the 19th Precinct, then he became the commanding officer of the Central Park of the second precinct for the and for the last year, he has come back to the 19th Precinct as our commanding officer. He also has a background as an attorney. We welcome Deputy Inspector Gallagher. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's great to be here on behalf of the men and women of the 19th Precinct. And I promise I'll be brief because I know we're running out against that 430 time frame. But I just wanted to talk about two very broad uh, public safety issues. There's being safe, and then there's feeling safe. So I want to talk very briefly about some of the crime statistics that are going on, and then some of the other issues that are going on that make people feel unsafe that have to be recognized. So thank you for recognizing that in the past month, our overall crime is down 22% which is very good. Most importantly is grand larceny, which is the crime of the theft of items that are worth more than $1,000, or something taken from your person, like a pickpocket or a purse snatching. Many of you may have seen over the news in the last 48 hours of a crew of people on mopeds going around Manhattan, particularly Midtown, uh, and robbing people. They did approximately 21 different robberies here in the but also south and in Midtown. And I'm um, very happy to report that yesterday morning at 3 a.m., the police officer in the Bronx spotted them, pursued them, and apprehended one of those individuals. So that group of robbery pattern, we hope, will be stopped and um, should be put where that person should be the law, which is a jail. Because robbery is a very, very serious crime. Nobody should be forced to take your items. And we have to make sure that when people choose to do that type of behavior, that they're held accountable. And they should be accountable. Now, I know that there's a lot of issues with crime, public safety, and it's not just crime statistics, but people also have to feel safe. And I know from many conversations with people in the neighborhood that there are many, many people that are feeling unsafe, largely due to the situation in Gaza and in Israel. I don't want to talk about that because I think it's extremely important to discuss from a police perspective. When, that, when the war first started, the NYPD mobilized a tremendous amount of resources into this neighborhood. Now, I don't publicly say numbers of police officers and where they are, but if I was to tell them how many police officers were put in the Upper East Side of Manhattan when the war started, I guarantee you, we would be stunned. Not only were those people wearing a uniform like myself, but there were many, many people who were not wearing a uniform that maybe you don't see, but I assure you, they were there. Any, any type of hate crime against anybody's religion will be dealt with swiftly and severely by the New York Police Department. So, when somebody commits a crime based on religion, we have a separate independent detective unit that only investigates hate crimes, the New York City Hate Crimes Task Force. That is all they do all day. We throw an extensive amount of resources to make sure that when people do that, they're apprehended. We had a few months ago an individual going around the Upper East Side putting SWAT stickers in the synagogue. That person was very, very quickly apprehended and incarcerated and put where they should have been. So I want to make that very, very clear to everyone that your safety is very, very important and that we are not going to allow people to come on the upper east side of Manhattan and threaten people, especially on the basis of religion. If there is nothing more that I can convey to every single person in this room, it is that is priority number one, I can say and that the entire police department will give us whatever resources we need to make that happen. I have a lot of police officers in the 19th Precinct. We care very deeply about you and your families, and those police officers make a lot of sacrifices to keep this neighborhood and everyone safe. And I would not be remiss if I didn't come up here and thank them publicly 
because they are tremendous individuals and tremendous human beings who literally stand at a moment's notice ready to protect people. And I always want to remind people of that. No, oh, thank you. So I know that we're running close to 4.30, but I wouldn't be able to take a few questions about anybody's concerns. Cut me off when you think it's time to go, but I wouldn't want to come here. Are you will? <laughs> don't give me that. Okay. Um, then I'll take one if anybody wants. Yes. So uh, Keith Powers mentioned what they were doing about the cannabis shops, and I know that they're everywhere. Can you tell us a little bit more about what you're being told to do the NYPD about them right now, or at all sort of incognito from a public perspective because something's coming down? Yeah. So um, when somebody uh, is in a is in a kind of a shop and breaking the law, just like when somebody is selling heroin or cocaine. Uh, we have a, a tactic that we deal with. I, I can't walk into a store wearing this and uh, somebody sell something they shouldn't. <laughs> so we have to take a kind of tactic and investigative technique that most people don't see. And and when they left all down, they destroyed the And this happened at night. And I made the report my mother and the They were very, very but I showed them a whole way, and there were video cameras there that we would talk to her phrase and draw up and slow pictures of the negative. And their response was, well, it's not on this contract with them. And I said, but I just gave you the land of the details. It's not up to us to do it, it's up to you to contact the land of the have the landlord send the video us. And to me, that type of response lacks a, uh, it, it's not a proactive stance on the part of the police officer. And, and they should have gone directly to the And I still don't know whether, uh, and, and I did contact <coughs> I still don't know the outcome. And, and that is, and you are correct on that. Um, the correct procedure on something like that, and they're wrong, or partially wrong, partially right. Um, when something like that happens, a, a, a report goes to the detective squads, and it's the detective that contacts and gets that. But if you, after the meeting, if you give me your contact information, I'll follow up and I'll find out what happened, and I'll point you Yes. <laughs> Well, I've lived here for many years and... Last question, sorry. Okay. I've lived here for over 30 years, maybe more. Um, and crime is part of my problem. I don't like to go to the subway because of fear that somebody's going to throw you onto the tracks. And um, I've always gone on the subway. It just doesn't seem uh, safe anymore. The other thing is I was at Dwayne Reed and there was nobody there who could help me, but I had um, a guy, big guy, that had a duffel bag and had um, another bag behind him stealing everything. And everybody in the store went to the other side. The train read here on 2nd Avenue and 63rd Street. And nobody told me to move, nobody helped me, and I had a dialogue with this criminal that was stealing everything in a matter of 10 minutes. There was nothing there. I believe that these stores should protect the citizens that are going in there shopping, and there should be somebody there that'll say, okay, you have to move, or something. Because, you know, we have CVS left, um, uh, a, lot of, a lot of our stores left, and we, we don't have these shopping abilities anymore to go shopping around here because they're all gone. 
Well, let me give you the, uh, the abbreviated answer to that question before uh, yeah. you know, we don't get thrown out of here. Um, shoplifting is, is obviously a huge problem, particularly in the 19th precinct. Um, I can tell you that our shoplifting issue is getting better. It's not where it should be, but it is getting better. The shoplifting issue is just a, a, a small group of people, a very small group of people, that are responsible for widespread theft. And when we apprehend that one person, we see the theft dramatically go down. So I just want to put that out to everybody that we, we do apprehend people and that it is a work in progress, but it is definitely going in the right direction here. And I wish I could give a longer answer to that because no. I definitely could, but I want to be respectful of everybody's time here. So um, with that, I thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you.